Hi, Errol. Hey, how are you doing today, Ashley? Good, good. How are you? Doing fantastic. Very excited to talk to you because I'm going to admit to you right in the very beginning. Oh, I'm so glad. I used to be that guy that would do get his news from the late show. I would get it from Stephen Colbert. But see, and then all of a sudden I'm going, wait a second, I need something like Crime Nation. And now, I mean, and that's what I love about the journalism on this show is that I think you guys understand that those of us that used to get it from those other places want the real deal. Uh, well, we're happy uh, to be able to be sort of an unbiased news source because it feels like they don't exist anymore right. anywhere else. And it's the reason why I joined News Nation was because they had a mission that was exactly the same mission when I started out in this business, and that is to do good journalism, and that's what you call reporting from both sides, not one side. Well, I love the idea that that, that this what you guys do isn't over in a five minute break or in uh, over in sixty minutes. I mean, you guys really break this down in two hours. Yeah, so it's it's super interesting. Um, when I was doing my crime show on News Nation at ten o'clock at night, uh, I started to realize like there are these opportunities to do deep dives. And so along came Crime Nation, the documentary show, and it was just a natural fit because, you know, when we have an hour long show and it's live, you're doing your best to mm -hmm. to break news and, you know, cover the news of the day. When you have an opportunity to do a two hour documentary like Crime Nation is doing, you really get deep into the story and you discover stuff that nobody has found before and you get interviews that no one has ever gotten before exclusive interviews so we're pretty excited to be able to um to bring brand new facts interviews perspectives uh to stories that you thought you may have known my god to be in a conference room when you guys bring out well well what did you get today and somebody brings something in there and it's like oh my god that to me is what broadcasting is all about when everybody comes together as one yeah, there was one of those moments in Drew Peterson, and if you remember oh, Drew Peterson, yes, I do. Uh, the guy who can't, you know, couldn't stop getting married, he had four wives, and two of them he had divorced, and the last two are either dead or missing, and so the penultimate wife he was actually convicted of killing, so he's sitting in um, in prison for that, but the fourth wife, Stacey Peterson, is still missing and presumed dead after all these years, but we have discovered brand new information about something he was doing inside his home that nobody knew before. And so that's what doing a deep dive in a two hour project will give to you. It'll give you the opportunity to take time, interview a lot of people, go back over the notes and discover new things. So. It, it, that boardroom is pretty exciting. I can't. I can't lie. Wow. See, it shows like Crime Nation as well as News Nation that when when I check in, I actually have my 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 smartphone with me in the way that I'm, I'll go and I'll I'll start digging myself. You 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 entice me to go and get even more of the story so that so that I better understand what's going on around us. So you are one of the new uh, true crime army um, out there because what we've discovered is that there are a lot of internet sleuths that are extremely helpful to an investigation. You know, there are only a limited number of police detectives who can be assigned right. to work these cases. And a lot of budgets are strapped, and so they do the best they can with what they can. And along comes a, a multi-million man army on the internet to say, I found something else. I've done a deep dive. If you have millions of eyeballs all helping out, there can be a real benefit to that. But Arrow, there can also be a real drawback. Yeah. I mean, you can get overzealous people who unfairly target the innocent and, and start suggesting that they've discovered the murderer. And that, that's happened. It happened in, in the Idaho Four murders. Uh, a professor at the University of Idaho was unfairly targeted by a blogger. And, um, and it's just pure and simple defamation. Uh, so it can be damaging. It can be hurtful. It can also be very helpful to have true crime um, fans uh, dig in online and start seeing what they can find. So many of these stories have fallen off from the front page of the newspaper, but yet you come in there somehow, some way, and you bring it back to the forefront. How, how is it that you're able to locate all this? Well, you know, what I have discovered in, well, 36 years of, of doing this job um, is that when the dust settles and the, the media circus dies mm -hmm. down off of a breaking, you know, story, um, and if people are given the advent of time, it's easier to talk to them, you know, six months, a year, two years out, uh, sometimes five years out, 
10 years out, suddenly the floodgates will open and a lot more information will flow than it did when there was a, a tense and nervous media circus going on. And so what we've discovered is that people will come out of the woodwork, people will speak who've never spoken before. We've got exclusive interviews in the in the Delphi murder. Um, we've got new and exclusive interviews in uh, the Gilgo uh, serial killings. We've got new and exclusive interviews um, in the uh, Drew Pearson story. Yeah. So. It just what we found is that if you give it time and you allot the amount of time to tell the story, two hours in these crime documentary blocks, you'll discover brand new information and astounding stuff. Ashley, when you find you know information like this and you get these these uh, unheard of interviews, you know, you know, if I were a lawyer, I would put you on that stand in a heartbeat to find out how is it you found this information when that team over there couldn't do it. Again, I think it's all the resources, right? There's only so many detectives that are assigned to the case. But what we tend to find is rather than putting me on the stand, what we tend to find happens is they put the people we unearth oh, on the stand. Yeah. Uh, Daryl, you will not believe it. Two nights ago, I was live on the air it, you know, covering this terrible shooting in Kansas City, Missouri after the yep, Super Bowl yep. parade. And I was talking to the family um, that that tackled one of the alleged shooters, the guy that brought the guy down, and the gun, you know, the gun scattered away from him. And this daughter was telling me this story of what you know was happening and what her dad was doing, and uh, and I just said, sort of blurted out, "Have you spoken to the police yet?" Oh, no. And she said, "No." Oh. <laughs> so there we were, live on the air, getting a witness statement for the first time. And lo and behold, about, gosh, what time was it? So about seven, nine hours later, they got a call wow. from the um, Kansas, City, Kansas City, Missouri police. And they gave the official uh, telephone interview statement to, to the police, you know, long after uh, they had told it to us. So they didn't need me on the stand. Uh, mm. they, they found... They found the witnesses who were there through me. What I love about when, when you're live like that, to me, that's the humanism of broadcasting because that question came from out of nowhere. And so many listeners don't understand that as broadcasters. When we're live, we're actually one of them. Yeah, we are. And <clears throat> I think you, of everyone, uh, knows this best. The art to asking questions and being an interviewer is listening yes the most important talent that we can develop in our craft is to listen because the conversation should be organic and it will lead to a natural inquisitive um you know path and that's where the good stuff will come out if you just have a set list of questions and you're you're just trying to get through you know the the time constraints or the live constraints or whatever it is that's a constraint um you'll miss things yeah. If you can do your best to just exhale and listen, that's where the magic happens. Well, one of the things that I've always loved about you, Ashley, is the fact that you ask the questions and then you question the answers. And, and to me, that you're going into a deeper story or like you're saying, you're deep diving when you ask that next question, which leads to another question. It always does. And it's it's how we interact as humans. Right. We as you know, a human race are communicative. We we tell stories. We pass you know, we pass our culture down to the generations through storytelling, through sharing, through communication. And so it's a natural art and we all have the ability to do it. Um, there's just things that get in the way, the pesky little things that can get in the way <laughs> of good communication and good broadcasters. They filter all that stuff out. Well, one of the things that, that really drew me to to watching this is the fact that I love your guys' mantra, and I'm sure you guys breathe this every day. When news is breaking, it's not as it appears. And that, to me, says, oh, my God, there's something here that I'm going to learn today. Yeah, and there always is. Um, I have always found breaking news to be the thing I enjoy the most mm -hmm. in, my, in my job because I feel like I'm on the edge of history. Um, it hasn't. It hasn't happened yet, and it hasn't been exposed yet. And then, wham, <laughs> I'm there as it's being literally written and exposed. And so, um, I feel like it, there's a there's a, a solemn responsibility to get it right, and and to also get it 
you know, because so much is left on the table after a lot of interviews that you either speed through the interviews or yep. there's there's a, a race to the to the to the deadline or to the end of show. Um, but if you can get the story, if you can literally get those details out of people, uh, it, it's a pretty satisfying thing. Wow. Where can people go to find out more about you and to find out more about Crime Nation? So Crime Nation is going to uh, debut February 20th. That's this Tuesday. Um, it's uh, it's two hour block. It depends on where you are. It's on the CW uh, in prime time. And to find me at night, uh, News Nation, I'm on at 10 p.m. Eastern. And uh, it's just it's super easy with the Google machine these days. <laughs> <laughs> you look up Crime Nation or News Nation and you'll find it in your market. I love it. Please come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Ashley. Arrow, I'm looking forward to it. I always love talking to you. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too, man.